the thing about the feminine energy is that you need to have faith. Feminine energy is the ability to call things that are not as though they are. Feminine energy is about calling things from the invisible into the visible. So that is the power that women have to call things that are not as though there are. And so it requires faith, right? It requires women to work, have like a prayer life or a spiritual life, right? And so that they could manifest. It requires women to have a relationship with themselves. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Shifting Dimensions podcast. I'm your host, Jumi Moses, and thank you so much for tuning in. Today, mm -hmm. I have the pleasure of speaking with Miss Veroni Anderson. Miss Veroni is a love catalyst and life coach. Her primary goal is to help women open their heart, embody their feminine energy, so that they can attract love, relationships, and an abundant life. Miss Veroni, mm -hmm. welcome to Shifting Dimensions. It's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm, just, I'm truly blessed to be here. I really wanted to have you on the show just because I believe that your insights are super instrumental, especially as it pertains to the dating landscape today, um, especially for women and how we show up in the world, how we embody our feminine energy and really move to a space where we can attract and keep love in our lives, because that's what a lot of people are looking for. Um, before we get into that, I want to start off by asking you, what does it mean to be a love catalyst? And how did you get into this line of work? Oh my God. Um, so love catalyst to me is that I help people activate the love inside of, of them. Because a lot of people, they don't think that they deserve love. They don't think that um, their heart is open and they just don't think that love is real. So I help people um, activate the love inside of them, right? Because that is how you ascend to the heart. If you want to go to heaven, you ascend to the heart. Um, so you need love, right? So that's what love kept this me to me. How did I get into this work? Woo! I had a massive heartbreak, a, a soul crushing heartbreak that um, I think it was my first real heartbreak. You know how you have some little things and you're like, oh, right? And so when I have this one, I couldn't, when I had it like 10 years ago, I couldn't shake it off like how I normally shake them off. Um, this one affected me so bad that I couldn't eat, sleep. I had anxiety. I lost like massive weight. You could see that there was something like wrong with me, but my spirit, soul, and body, they were just out of alignment, um, right? And so it took me many years to like get myself back together. Um, and as I tell people, I walk through fire. Um, so a lot of people said, oh, you know, the best way to get over a man is to get under a man. But because my soul was crushed, I couldn't even go into a relationship if I want to. Um, I couldn't even feel my body, right? Um, like my whole body was it's just out of alignment. So I couldn't even um, date somebody or sleep with somebody if I if I wanted to, because I was just literally just numb. And that's what got me here. Um, but when I started to heal, it was so weird. Now, now I'm looking back, I realized that I heal so many different components of my life and my body. Um, first, I heal my, my womb space. So I started to work on my heart, but I healed my womb space first, right? Um, because I was still feeling period pain at that time. And so um, I started to work on my womb space. And I think one of the things that I did is that I did an apology to my vagina, um, where I said that, you know, I dishonor her, right? Because I let people in who I know that shouldn't enter her, right? So I wrote a letter to her. Um, then I did like just sermon stuff just with my womb, right? And then I did that. And that led me to working on my sexuality. Um, and when I started to work on my sexuality, people think that I was crazy. Um, you know, a lot of people was like, oh, there goes Veroni again. She's crazy because I think I started to be more liberal with my body, with who I am. Um, I started to post like sexy picture online. And um, if you see my channel, I was talking about like sex a lot, right? Um, I guess I heal my body when it comes to like orgas 
orgasm, I think I stepped into my sexual sovereignty um, then. Then afterwards, I guess I started work on my heart. I, I don't know. It just such different components, right? Um, I started to work on um, lean cycle because that, that just shit my world when I found out just how powerful woman woman is, right? And that I didn't need to compete with men, that my power as a woman was so different and was so powerful. And I think I kind of settle within my womanness, my woman, when it's like I truly know the essence of who I am. And I think I become like unshakable. So there is so many different facets. Um, I'm also like a theater healer. There is just so many different things that I did to actually just totally like heal. And I wasn't ready for a relationship for like a very long time because I just, I wanted to be by myself because, you know, something for me, and I know I'm talking a lot, something for me is that I've always been in a relationship, right? Um, attractive woman. I never really have any problem like men coming on to me. So I'm always in a relationship. So after this heartbreak, and then I decided that um, I, um, I didn't want anybody. I was celibate for a while, right? And I was just exploring and discovering like who I am, right? So it was just such a happy time, a profound time. I was spending time with myself. I, it was just, it was just so revealing. And each of the steps that I took, I think I started on YouTube where I just started to talk about, you know, the stuff that I was going through. And yeah, just here I am, right? <laughs> beautiful story and you know it's so interesting as I was hearing you talk I was thinking about the fact that I think you know this podcast for example is called shifting dimensions and I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest shifts that we have in life come mm -hmm. from painful heartbreak relationships mm -hmm. where we're literally mm -hmm. broken open and it literally yeah. shifts us into a new paradigm of mm -hmm. being right mm -hmm. so it sounds like you had this tremendous heartbreak that mm -hmm. crushed you Mm -hmm. And I don't want to assume things, but I would assume that maybe the past relationships that you had, including the one that really broke you, you were probably putting a lot of your self-worth and who you were as a person into those relationships with those men. And then it sounds like after you let that go or while you were trying to process the heartbreak, you were kind of journeying back to yourself. It was like this self-discovery self evolution right where whether it was manifesting through your i think the sexual energy is also your sacral energy as well mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken whether it was manifesting through that or you just becoming more of who you are unapologetically that's what it sounds like and i don't want to assume but would you say that that's correct um well my relationship before i think i had like a pretty good handle on the relationship before mm -hmm. um but i think this one was um different um so so what i think happened is that i lost my daughter father um yeah i lost my daughter father and that broke my heart too um <sighs> yeah that broke my heart too and then then I afterwards I got into a relationship and that relationship um I think I stretched my boundaries there was stuff that I accepted that I wouldn't have accepted before right and so I had to really look at myself to be like what the frig happened to you Veroni because you were such a powerful woman there was stuff that you wouldn't have accepted before right and so this I had to really look at my I had to really look at myself right like I think I needed to fortify myself I needed to come back to myself I think I lost who I am as um uh, as a person um and I I was gonna say as a strong woman but I don't want to be a strong woman <laughs> because when you identify as a strong woman you always have to have stuff that was gonna the universe is gonna confirm that you are a strong person so um, now I, you know, just think I am just this magnificent, lucky um, woman and just these things just come into um, my life. But yeah, I had to really look at the reason why I, I, I trusted myself, right, for this purpose. And every time I said, I'm not going to do this, right, then I make an excuse and then I did it, right, just to accommodate that person in my life. So I had to like really look into myself um, and say like, 
what the hell happened? I mean, like what, what, what was going on? Right. Yeah. Can we talk, can we talk a little bit more about that? Right. Because I think a lot of people struggle with forgiving themselves when you look uh -huh. back on a relationship and you're like, why did I allow that to happen? Why did I betray myself? I know that I've struggled with that in the past where it's like, why on earth would I allow that to happen? And it's like, it, it becomes self-loathing. You're mad at the uh -huh. person, but then you're uh -huh. really, truly pissed at yourself. So how can we move to a space where we can forgive ourselves for stretching our boundaries or not honoring who we're supposed to be? Because at that time, you did the best that you could in that emotional space you thought that that person, that love that you felt, it was like the only love, like the best love, right? And so after, but you needed that experience, right? You needed that experience. See, we come on this earth to gain experience, right? So that we could have testimony. If I didn't go through that, then I couldn't talk to a woman like you because now I know all of this, right? I have this experience and so now I know. So we need that. But um, I... I I, I, I breathe, as I said, healing is not easy. <laughs> you're going to bleed. <laughs> it's not easy. You are going to bleed and you're going to be ashamed and you're going to cry and you're going to be like, what the hell, right? But you just have to pick yourself up and you just have to like forgive yourself, right? And so as human beings, um, we, we punish ourselves more than once for the same situation. And so we have to get out of that. We, we, we need to like look in the mirror. Um, yes, it happened. Yes, I fucked up. But as a human being, I did the best that I can at that time. Now I know better, right? Now I know better. So now I'm just going to do better. That's all we can do. Maya Angelou says, when you know better, yeah. you do better. And better. I love that you said you did the best you could given <laughs> your emotional state around that time because sometimes when you're in certain situations whether relationship or job mm -hmm. or family situations you don't want to lose the love or the comfort that you believe mm -hmm. that you have from that situation so you mm -hmm. kind of go into a mode I don't want to say it's desperation but you feel like you need mm -hmm. to do anything yeah. in order to keep it and especially for those who are people pleasers Mm -hmm. um, you can find yourself in that situation all the time but the thing is like sometimes people get heartbroken and they're stuck there for decades without them even realizing, right? And they're stuck there because they can't move forward. They can't get into a new relationship. So how do you bleed and move forward, right? How do you cry and make sure that you're still moving forward past that pain? So a lot of people, they, they are comfortable with the pain, right? That feeling, they want to hold on to that relationship. They want to hold on to that person. And the only way they could hold on to that person is if they stay in the pain. So they don't want to move on, right? And so by staying in that pain constantly, now their body is hooked on the feeling of that pain because they're comfortable with it. And so every time they rethink the situation over and over and over and over, right? They're experiencing the same emotion that they had before, right? Their body's releasing a chemical and they're staying stuck in that one spot. So unless they have to make the conscious decision, right? To be like, hey, not only do I say I want better, right? I am going to do the action to move one step forward, right? Because every time when you walk, right? One step is what? In the present and one step is in the future. So we're constantly moving, right? And so some people, their energy is stuck and their energy is constant. Their energy is just stuck and they don't want to move. And then it affects every everything, 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 right? It tripled down, right? Because you are this one person and you have a world around you, right? And so if you're stuck in one area, it affects every area into your life. And so some people will say, hey, you know, I can't, people are treating me bad on this job, or I can't attract anybody, or they, they will just come up with something. 
right? And it's because them themselves, their energy is actually. I don't think your energy is stuck. I think either your energy is moving backwards, because energy is always moving, right? Right. So it's 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 going it's going backwards. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Yeah, your energy might not be stuck, but it might be stuck in the past, right? Like it's it's trying to, it wants to, there's this weird like friction. It wants to move forward to the future, yes. but like you're so identified with right. the emotions from the past. Cause you're right. I do think people say they don't want to feel sad. They don't want to feel stuck in certain situations. And that's the truth. But I also think we're comfortable there. It's what we know, right? It's it, the same things we feed ourselves. We get into this loop and it becomes our comfort zone. And a it's lot an of people are not. Yes. It's an addiction. Mm. It's like an addiction. That comfort zone that your body release, release chemical every time um, you repeat the same cycle over and over again, because they said, okay, I don't want to feel, um, I'm not going to say depressed. Like I don't want to feel stuck or I don't want to feel heartbroken, but they, go back and they think about what happened, right? And then their body um, creates that chemical, right? And so their body's hooked on the chemical now. So it's like, they are like an addict to that situation. And so it's hard for them to move. So even though they're saying with their mouth, hey, I want a good person. Hey, I want to do this, but give them two days and they revert right back to that situation. You're absolutely right. Okay, so I want to ask now, so let's say, you know, we've talked about heartbreak, right? Uh -huh. We've talked about moving through that pain. Now, uh -huh. let's talk about someone who has gone through the heartbreak, they've moved through the pain, and they uh -huh. want to attract love, right? Uh -huh. How do they do that? Do they make a list? Because people talk about, oh, you need to make a list, you need to manifest it, you need to want it, but also not be attached to it. There's so many different rules of thought when it comes to that yeah. attracting love. I want to hear from you because you have so much insight on this. How do we attract love after we've done the work? Um, you know, one of the exercises that I, I have people do or just say is that if you want to attract love, right, focus on love, right? And so don't watch any movie or any gossip thing where they're saying toxic relationship this person is fighting right there this person's writing right this divorce right there this whatever right there don't do that right focus on couple who you see who are in love right you could either go to the freaking say you go to a restaurant or, or somewhere and focus on every couple that you see have love and be happy for them don't be like how can that person find a man and I can't find any, right? So focus on them. Watch Hallmark. That's all about like, you know, love thing. So just focus on love and be happy for them and be be happy for the relationship that you have as a single person. Don't say, oh, I am single. Oh my God, I'm so tired of being single. I'm so, I'm, I'm, I'm so over it. I'm so what? I'm so tired of being single. Be happy to be in the relationship that you are with yourself, right? And so another person can come in because I believe, you know, if I, I don't know if you watch my thing a lot, but I'm an energetical person more than a, a, a physical person. Like go out and do the dating thing. I, I deal with the energetics. So, um, you know, be happy for people who are in love, right? Be happy for the relationship that you have. Oh my God, I'm in a relationship with myself. Right. I'm so happy with this relationship with myself. And then your relationship will come in because your appreciation of the relationship that you have now. Right. So the universe is going to be like, oh, my God, this person's so happy with the relationship. So I'm going to send more relationship, more relationship, good relationship, because you vibrate or you attract at the level where you're at, like water seeks its own level. You're right. Okay, so speaking of energetics, because you said something very important, right? Because I think a lot of people focus on the action, get on mm -hmm. dating apps, do this, do that. But you, like you said, focus a lot on the energetics. And something mm -hmm. that I see online a lot of times, people always talk about healing. You need to heal so you can let love in. And that's true. But mm -hmm. do you have to be perfectly healed, right? And do you have to be a perfect size? Do you have to have the right job? Do you have to be perfectly organized, right? Because people always say, if you want to attract certain things into your life, then you need to become that thing, right? So it's like, 
a lot of times I'm like, okay, so do I have to have all of my ducks in a row before I attract the right type of love that I'm looking for? If you're perfectly healed, then you will no longer be in this earth. You'd be up in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we are always healing, right? We're just healing different things at a time. So you wouldn't heal like the whole complete system. Say you, you, you're sick and say you have a liver issues, for it, then you will heal the liver, right? Right. And then you just heal like different things. So I am still working on stuff that I'm healing, right? I'm still, I'm working on like some money issues that I have, right? So there is always stuff for people to heal. So you don't have to be perfect. Um, but you know what some people maybe say, oh my God, they um, maybe say they're earning $5 an hour, maybe they're not working and they'd be like, oh my God, I want a man who is a million dollar man. That man is so far out of their trajectory because that is just so absurd. Um, that is just so weird, right? Because if a person who is earning like $5, you're not going to be in the same vicinity as somebody who is um, earning like a million dollars. So then you are kind of like tricking yourself um, like right there, right? And so when it don't happen, You'll be like, oh, nobody don't want me. Like, no. So you still is going to attract at the energy level that you are. And so, for instance, a lot of people will come to me and they would like, oh my God, my boyfriend is such a narcissist. I'm like, okay. Why did you attract a narcissist? Like, why did you think you attract a narcissist? And why you keep on saying, oh, my boyfriend is such a narcissist. He does this and he does that. The reason why you attract a narcissist is because you were looking for somebody to rescue you. The reason why you were a narcissist is because you were looking for somebody to lead you. Oof. Right? The reason why you attract a narcissist is because you didn't want to take control of your life and you want somebody else to take control of your life for you. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Wow. You know, I, I always say, and I've heard people say this all the time, that the people that are in our lives, especially romantic relationships, they serve as mirrors to us. And it's not like a mirror where it's like, okay, if I'm a mean person, my mm -hmm. partner is mean. No, how mm -hmm. it works, I believe it works, is that if I'm a mean person, maybe my partner is so nice that they have no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And it's mirroring back to me that I'm a little too harsh, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also mirroring to my partner who's too nice mm -hmm. that they don't have any boundaries. They mm -hmm. can't stand up for themselves, right? It's very fascinating. So when you just when you just said what you said, that was a read. That was a read. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I tell people who attract narcissists, I said you attract a narcissist because the narcissist is there to tell you how to love yourself because you can't love yourself. Because the narcissist is so self-absorbed and they're like, oh, I'm the greatest person in the world and there is nobody like me. But you, you have no boundary. You don't love yourself, right? So the narcissist is there to show you how to love yourself. And you are there because you have um, no boundaries, right? You are there to show the narcissist some kindness and you know how to 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 at least have some empathy for somebody else. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, do you think that the universe tests us sometimes? Because I've heard people say that when you're calling in someone and you've become very self-aware. So if you're the person who's a people pleaser, for example, you realize, okay, you don't have any boundaries. You need to, you know, have some have a backbone. You need to take charge of your life and be the author of your life, you might attract someone again who kind of pushes your boundaries or forces you again to stand up for yourself before actually meeting the person you're supposed to be with. Do you believe in that rhetoric? Do you think that that's true when you're on the healing slash love the, journey? The universe kind of give you what you need, right? You maybe not think that you need it, but you also need to have um, discernment. You also need to have um, intuition, right? And so you could say, no, that is not what I want because there is free will, right? And so if you see a person who maybe have the same pattern that you were trying to get out of, you could say, no, I do not want this, right? And so maybe that, maybe that little test of saying, no, I do not want this, because you don't have to go in a relationship with the person that little test right there to refuse it, you just pass and just go another level. 
So everything don't have to be like a big old time, you know, this big massive length of time you have to punish yourself. Sometimes you could just simply say, no, I do not want this. I do not accept this, right? And you move up to another level to find your person. Right. So another thing that I've heard a lot of times too is that people always say, well, if you want to attract something new into your life, a new partner into your life, you need to let go of your past relationships and people that you've loved or been in a relationship with before in the past and not every ex is necessarily an enemy right so is there on an energetic level right is there truth or is there validity in saying you need to release contact with your exes um or just like not like basically cut people off that you've been in a romantic relationship with in order to be able to attract the person that's for you? I, I do cleansing when me and a person, when I'm working with clients, so I do, I, I do cleansing. And the reason for the cleansing is the energetical ties that you have with them, right? And so say you and a person break up, right? And there is no more, is the charge, is the charge. How fierce is the charge, right? Because you and a person could break up and there is, when you see the person, you don't feel angry. You don't feel whatever. You say, hi, you talk. So there is no charge. The charge is mutual, right? And so there is not that cord that is attached to that person because you don't have the charge anymore. And you want that person relationship doesn't have the charge. But if the charge is still there, then you need to clean the space. And how do uh, we... Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead, please. I don't, uh, you know what? It's twofold with this, right? Where um, I don't really block people, uh, but sometimes you do if the person is upsetting your spirit and you want that space, right? So sometimes you need to block so you could have the strength and the fortitude to kind of deal with that. You need to like process that energy because sometimes the charge is too strong, right? But there need to come a time where you address that issue. You shouldn't be running or blocking that person for like five years and say five years after and you see that person, that charge is still so strong that mean the energetical cord is really strong and you guys didn't work through it. So either you still love that person because the opposite of love is hate on the underside of it. So when you're like, oh, still mad or hate that person, right? It's because you still have love there. And it's just mass as hate or anger. And there is still issues within you that you haven't dealt with. Mm, okay, I think you answered this perfectly because this is what I was trying to get at. It's less about the interactions. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, obviously if you're going to move to a space where you want to draw love into your life, I don't think anybody would be super close to people that they were in romantic relationships with or situationships, right? Because not everything is a title. It's more about the energetics and the feelings towards that person yes, and being yeah. able to heal whatever issues or pain that dynamic caused yes. and not be triggered by it mm -hmm. and the lack of trigger uh -huh. is what you're that's the cleansing that's the yes. cutting of the energetic yes. cord yes. in order for yes. you to move forward so mm -hmm. even if you block them but mm -hmm. that energetic cord is still there and you still mm -hmm. feel rage every time you mm -hmm. think about them then mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether or not you're talking to them or not no. that person is still fully in your space okay fully in your space wow Oh, God, this is really good. This is really good. Okay, so is there power in making a list of the type of person that you're calling in? I think it's just clarity. Mm. It's clarity, right? Because confusion, um, there is no law and order in confusion. And so you do it just for clarity. But it's not something that you should like, oh my God, he doesn't have this thing on my list. He doesn't have this thing on my list. It's just that, you know, you you make the list. The Bible said what you, you make the vision and you write it plain. So it's just like writing it plain. And when you are actually writing, you're also creating. So you kind of creating the kind of man that you need because you are writing it out, right? So the person is not going to come like directly 100% specific, but you just know the kind of person that you want. So you're making it clear to you. You're making it clear to the universe and you're also setting that intention. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. How much does feminine energy play a role in attracting a mate, right? 
because I think a lot of times our feminine energy is being attacked. We're told that after you reach a certain age, if you don't have kids, if you don't have someone in your life, you're basically like chopped liver, right? And I think a lot of women in general just don't feel good in themselves and find themselves in more of a masculine energy. So can you really explain what feminine energy is and do we, and how much of us embodying that will attract what we need? Oh, I think sometimes I'm tired of the feminine energy um, thing because I think it's so distorted. And I think people, um, I think people mass feminine energy would say just to be like feminine and you do your hair when you do whatever and you all of that stuff. And there is nothing wrong with looking pretty because as you see, girl, like to look pretty, right? And so everyone have masculine and feminine energy. Men have masculine and feminine energy. Everything on this earth have masculine and feminine energy. The plants, the battery. That's why you see the battery have one whole, right? So everything have masculine and feminine energy. The thing about with some women, because some women have more masculine energy than, you know, so. So the thing about it is say me and you, we have our feminine energy center percent and our masculine energy is like um, 30%, right? And so you need, you need both, right? You need both. The thing about the feminine energy, and I people don't like when I talk about it like this, is that um <laughs> The thing about the feminine energy is that you need to have faith. Feminine energy is the ability to call things that are not as though they are. Feminine energy is about calling things from the invisible into the visible. So that is the power that women have to call things that are not as though there are. And so it requires faith, right? It requires women to work have like a prayer life or a spiritual life, right? And so that they could manifest. It requires women to have a relationship with themselves. And so I know a lot of people, you know, think about feminine energy as attracting. Yes, it does attract and call things unto itself. So it calls good things unto itself and it also calls bad things unto itself, right? So feminine energy represents water. And what does water do? water carry, water transform, right? And so we have, so the ability of like attracting and call things onto ourselves, right? Different from a man, we could call different opportunities and many different things onto ourselves, right? But a lot of women, their, um, their energy is just off. Their energy is just low, right? And so they cannot, they cannot attract and your energy can be leaking out like every month because your energy leaks out through your period. Your energy also leaks out through your root chakra. So a lot of women, their energy is just off, right? And so their energy is just leaking out. Some of them just want to freaking go through the sun and get some vitamin D. They want to just move, right? And so their energy is just so off that they can't track anything. And a lot of them are like depressed. <laughs> so um, they just get in this whole feminine energy so distorted. And so you need both your feminine energy and your masculine energy, right? A lot of women, they have too much feminine energy where they don't have any power because, um, so you have chakras, you have seven major chakras, right? Each chakra, one is um, the number one for a woman is masculine. The, the womb chakra, and now I'm calling a blank, is feminine. And the, the sacral chakra right here, the one for personal power, the one where you could stand up and talk, advocate for yourself, have boundary, right? A lot of women have deficit in that and they are so weak. They have no personal power there. Um, people pleasing so you need both okay right and so this thing that say action without faith is dead the faith is the feminine energy and the action is the masculine energy and then when you have that then you you have the thing so to, to be do have right be is the feminine energy do is the masculine energy and then you have that's how you manifest here on this earth so you need both. I love that you put that so well. I do think we need our feminine and masculine energy. And like you said, feminine energy is not just about the way you look. It's 
the way you move through the world. The flow. It's the way you flow through the world. Yes. And I think that, um, you know, to your point, a, a lot of women are too much in their quote unquote feminine energy because an extreme of anything is always problematic. You can't speak up for yourself. <laughs> and then there's some women who are too much in their masculine energy. And a lot of times they might not even be aware of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. What mm -hmm. are some signs that a woman is too in her masculine and could potentially be turning men off when she's interacting with them? Um, maybe too bossy, mm. right? Um, she wants to prove something all the time, right? You know, she's good at this. You know, um, she could do this maybe. And I, I wouldn't say a career, but she's too, um, she just, she, and she can't rest. She cannot rest, right? She always has to like do, do, do. She always has to prove herself, right? So that's one of the things when you are in your masculine energy, right? What was the other question you asked me? I went over. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just wanted to know what are some th things that women do that might be turnoffs for men? Like, you know, when people are trying to, women, I'm sticking to women because obviously mm -hmm. lots of people are trying to attract people into their life. I'm sure there are things that men do that turn women off as well. But what, what are some things that women do that they end up shooting themselves in the foot because they don't know these are turnoffs and they might be more in their masculine energy and turning off guys that they actually want to attract? Um, they talk too much. Um, they reveal um, things too much because feminine energy, it is um, mysterious. There's a depth to them. They don't reveal too much, right? Um, so they should also be in their flow. They don't have to prove anything. They just have to be. So when you talk too much, want to shoot, um, show, show off too much, want to reveal too much, right? There is no mystery, right? Um, woman, there is this softness. There is just this flow to them. So when you say reveal too much, because that's oh. interesting. Because people always talk about how can you find real love if you're not mm -hmm. vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think vulnerability requires talking about things that mm -hmm. you may not want to share with someone. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit more about the revealing too much? Is that revealing too much too soon revealing or in general? Too, no, it's revealing too much too soon, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you want people to dig for gold. You want people to dig for gold a little bit, right? And then you could find just a, a way of spoken words where you don't really be, reveal everything, but you just leave a little bit of mystery or you just leave a little bit of mystery about yourself. Like there is just something where a man is like, I just want to know more about that woman. Right? There is just something about her. I want to know something about her. But some women, they talk too much, right? They just, they just, they just talk too much, right? And so just... Just calm it down just so that you could listen. Let them speak so that you could listen. But of course, if you see the relationship is going, right, then you um, you talk. Okay, that's a good, I that has my wheels sp spinning a lot mm -hmm. because I used to think like, okay, the more, not like just tell your whole life story at once, but it's kind of like if you're up front and this mm -hmm. person is like, okay, cool, like you know everything, it's like, this is who I am. So you either accept it or you don't accept it. But I think keeping some mystery is yeah, what you're don't saying. Do that, don't do that all for nothing thing. Like, this is where I am. Either you accept it or you whatever. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that because that's giving the person an ultimatum. Mm. That, and what that, is wrong with giving ultimatums? Um, why, to me, like, why would you, you're forcing them into a corner. It's like a cat. You're forcing them into a corner, right? Okay. And so I wouldn't, I'm not going to get, I don't recommend giving a grown person an ultimatum. That is when you need to step back and look at yourself. You could ask for what you need. Say, this is what I need, right? Because as a grown woman, you ask for what you need. If you feel like you talk, you communicate your needs and the person is not giving you what you want, then it's upon you as a grown person to say, this is this place is not for me. All my needs is not met. And then you leave. There is no need to give a person an ultimatum. It means that you were desperate at that point. Mm. 
Okay. Right. So yeah. just go because you have communicate your needs. Say, hey, you know, this is what I want. Can can you can you give it to me? Right. And if the person doesn't want to, so at that time when you give the person an ultimatum, is that the person it is not bending, right? And so now you're saying, hey, unless you do this, I am leaving. Mm. No. Wow. Okay. How do we handle rejection? I think that's a perfect segue because, you know, when you're in this world of dating, yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. you're getting to know people. And on one hand, you kind of have to keep your heart somewhat open. Mm -hmm. You have to keep your heart somewhat open so you can let someone in. But mm -hmm. in the stage of talking to them, you might realize, ah, this person is not for me. And mm -hmm. it hurts. And mm -hmm. having to do that a couple of different times, you know, kiss a couple of different frogs till you find your prince. How do we keep our heart resilient and how do we handle rejection and not take it so personally when, when we're getting to know someone just doesn't turn out the way we want it to, to wanted it to be. Um, it's like going on a job interview, right? It's like, so one of the things that women do is they meet a guy and the guy say a few nice words to them and they already envision their wedding, their marriage, their everything, right? You don't go into it based on the fact that is that person, did he treat you nice? Is he consistent, right? Um, did he do, did, did his action align with his words? You already start to have this whole fan fantasy that is not real, right? And so go on it based on, hey, I am going on this date. It is what it is. I'm going on it. I'm going to enjoy myself. I am going to um, to judge this date based on the reality that I see with my eyes and not on the fantasy that I have in my head. And you as a grown person is going to know that what? Not everybody's going to like me and I am not going to like every person. And it doesn't mean that you are not good. It doesn't, your worthiness doesn't determine by if a person rejected you, yes or no. It just means that you and that person is not in alignment. Maybe you like the person, but the person doesn't like you. So that means that person wasn't for you. He wasn't for you, right? And so just... I think of it like that, that person wasn't for you. Not every person that you meet or you talk to is going to be for you. Because sometimes some of the girls, they don't even like the guy, but just because the guy rejected them, they're in their feelings. A lot of times it's, it's an ego thing for sure. Yes. And, and yes. it can be, it can mask itself as, oh my gosh, I really like this person. It's like, I didn't, you didn't really like them. You didn't choose yes. them for yourself either, but because they rejected you it feels like they're more valuable to you all mm -hmm. of a sudden speaking yes. of worthiness one of the things that is a huge roadblock for a lot of women and men sometimes mm -hmm. is body image a mm -hmm. lot of people self-sabotage relationships or getting to know people because they don't feel good about themselves they don't mm -hmm. feel like they're at the ideal weight they don't feel like they have the right shape how can people especially women work through body image issues and stay in their worth while seeking romantic relationships with men. But your worth is not determined by your body, body issue. Your worth is not determined by your body issue. You were born worthy and that will never change until the day you die. And so it's because you are thinking that your work is determined by your body issue, then you are going to attract people who are going to judge you based on the body issue image that you have, right? Because you are projecting your inside fear out on the outside world. And as the, the saying go, as within, so without. So what you are seeing on the inside or what you feel on the inside is going to reflect on your outside. But woman, if you are listening to me right now, you were born worthy. That will never change until the day you die. And nothing, 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 the way you look, the things, anything doesn't determine your worthiness. You were born worthy, period, point blank. Full stop. My, yes, mic drop. <laughs> yes. You were born worthy. You're absolutely right. I think our internal world always refer, reflects mm -hmm. our external world because I think what we think on the inside, mm -hmm. we're constantly mm -hmm. like looking out into the world to see like, to validate 
what we believe to be true. And if you don't believe yourself to be worthy, if you don't believe yourself to be um, beautiful physically, even, and then we're not saying this so that you don't work towards any sort of physical or fitness goals that you have, but you don't need to be perfect or look a certain way before attracting the love that you desire. So what you feel on the inside is going to project it to your gate, right? And so your gates are your, say, your eyes, right? And so because you feel this, that you're not worthy, right? You're going to see everything you're going to see is through the eyes, that lens. See, this is how you see the outside world. You're going to see it through those lens that you have, right? So because I think that I'm the baddest, well, I'm going to say the baddest woman in the world, right? And I think that I am the lucky. Everything I see is through the lens of luck right? So I wear a glass of luck and opportunity and abundance. And so everything that I see is lucky and abundance. So everything that's come into my world or my, my worldview is of luck, right? Because that's the glass that I wear. So what glass do you wear? And so if you, the, if you wear a glass of not worthy, everything that you're going to see in your world right? Because that's what's on the inside. Everything that you're going to hear is of you not worthy. All the information that you're going to attract into the world, right? Is it's going to be like, oh my God, I'm not worthy. So you're going to see all women who are skinny and beautiful. And here you go. You're thinking that, you know, you're the same. It's, it's your world is just like TikTok algorithm, right? You look at one thing once and what show up? Everything, uh, Right. So that's the same thing with your world. The world and TikTok is like the same thing. You watch one thing then. <laughs> right. It shows yeah. everything that you you are interested in. So you need to change what's inside. So the um the glasses that you 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 you're looking through change. What I'm hearing you say is that reality is almost kind of like an algorithm. So yes. it depends on what you want your algorithm to show yes. you right yeah. to double down on and if your yeah. algorithm says that you're the baddest woman yes then that's what is going to continue to show up in your life that's the lens yes. you're going to look yes. through and does it mean sometimes you might get come across someone who is not that nice to you but it's kind of like if I'm going through my TikTok page or Instagram page and I see a post I don't like I swipe up immediately yes, yes. or I hide it and I block it and I you know Yes. barely see it right so it's yes. kind of the same thing like even when you come across things that yes. go against what you think about yourself you still mm -hmm. like you know swipe it up you know it's it's really interesting how the mind works because you have to believe the things about yourself first in order for you mm -hmm. to actually receive it so if, even if someone's saying oh I love you so much you're the best woman I've ever met mm -hmm. if you don't believe that about yourself you're going to push them away yeah you see what you identify with so yeah. if you identify as a broken woman, the, the, the universe is going to confirm that with you. So you're going to have a relationship where the person come in and abuse you. And you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you see, you see. I tell you that I am not a worthy woman. Look what just happened to me. If you see yourself as a victim, if you identify as a victim, the universe is going to play a bad script for you, right? Mm -hmm. That movie is going to play for you. The, the victim. So if you see yourself as a victim, right, you're going to have a guy who come in and take all your money and use all your money and, and leave. And you're going to be like, oh, you see, I told you I'm a victim man. Always come in and use me because that's the script that you identify with, right? So the universe is going to play that script for you. And so that is why there is many different, there's a big world, right? But we also have the, the microcosm world. And that's so each person have their own world and they see their reality through that lens, right? And so a woman may, may be wondering, oh my God, how is things happening for that woman over there? Because she see herself as a goddess, right? But you see yourself as a victim. And so the reason why this person life may be look glorious is because of what she identified with. So the universe is sending her all the stuff that she identified with, right? It doesn't mean that her life is going to be perfect, but it means that, you know, she's going to get what she identified with right? Yes, absolutely. You know, in the world that we live in, a lot of times people live in a scarcity mindset, right? Mm. I, I see online, oh, where are all the good men? 
you know, mm-hmm. we're all the good people. Nobody, they're not available anymore. They're taken, right? And sometimes that will cause women to stay in situations that are not good for them because they want to have someone. And then it will also cause some women to go on the other extreme where they're like, I don't need a man. I'm mm-hmm. okay by myself. Even though, you know, deep, you know, deep, deep down, down, they mm-hmm. probably want a partner. I think it's normal mm-hmm. for people to to crave that. So mm-hmm. how do you help women who've given up, who are in a lack mindset, stuck in a situation that they shouldn't be in, or they've given up on trying to find love? How do you talk them through that um, lack of abundance mindset? To tell you the truth, I don't want any um, customers who I have to push up the hill. It's too hard and it's too heavy. I do that on social media right now where I feel, because I feel people's energy. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm pushing a um, woman up the hill. And so even when I say like the littlest um, you know, you are beautiful, you are whatever. They're like, no, I'm not, I'm not beautiful. And so those kind of women, they have to reach at a level where they believe it, at least believe it a little bit, are willing to work on it. Because I can't be saying that you are beautiful, but you can't receive it, right? And so if you can't receive, you're blocking your feminine energy and you're so full with, say, a cup of water. So here I am telling you as a woman who's supposed to be a receiver, right? And I know I use a lot of things, right? And so in the cup that you have right here, you feel like you are not worthy. You feel like you're a victim. You feel like you're ugly. You feel like you're this. So here I come in with myself is saying that, oh my God, you're a beautiful woman and trying to pour into you. And your cup is filled with all these garbage. And you're like, no, 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 right? And you have no more space to receive any of the good thing that I'm giving you. So it's your job and your responsibility to clean that out, right? So if you're not willing to do it, right? Then I can't work with you because I can't um, be giving you stuff and you're like blocking it. I can't, that means you're not ready to receive. So I only work with women who are ready to receive, women who want to take the the, um, the responsibility to say, hey, I fucked up, I messed up, but now I want to do better and I'm willing to do better. So whatever you say or whatever suggestion, I'm going to take it in. I'm going to do the action and I'm going to do it because you see women like those who don't take anything in, they're going to give you problems <laughs> later on in the coaching, what it, right? Because they're not ready to receive. They are blocked. Their energy field is blocked. Their mindset is blocked. Everything is just like. No. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that you'd rather work with people who shifted into a frequency where they're ready to do the work they believe Mm -hmm. that it's possible Mm -hmm. and you basically work with them to amplify that energy so that they can Mm -hmm. manifest the love that they want into their life okay something else you talk about in terms of energetics is that when people are trying to call in their person whether man Mm -hmm. or woman there's also something to be said about their physical environment right Mm -hmm. so for example if they have a bed they, you know, and the left side of their bed is filled with clothes. There's oh, no you're listening space to me, huh? Yes, I am listening to you. Trust me. I listen to you. Um, you know, if there's a bunch of clothes on the left side of their bed, nobody can, you know, sleep next to them. If they need to declutter their closet or they need to reorganize their house. So can you speak to the energetics of our physical space as it pertains to calling it a partner? Yes, because your energy, your house is an extension of who you are. And so there is different parts of your, in your house that represent um, certain areas in your life. It represents the relationship area, it represents your wealth area, it represents your health area, it represents your, um, for, your, say, your fortune area, it represents your knowledge area, right? So there is certain areas that represent certain things in your life. Now, if you're trying to attract a, um, a romantic partner or a partner, then you want the partner to come into your bedroom. So that's the area that would represent like love, romantic partner, your bed, right? And so if you're telling the universe that, hey, I want a partner, but yet the the bed that you want to sleep in, right, is the space that you have all your clothes and shit on, right? So you're giving like mixed feelings right there. So clear off your bed and plus you cannot manifest in clutter. The first step you need to do is to like clean. You cannot manifest in, in, in clutter. Um, so what I do, so I'm about to run like a 27 challenge to call in your man. And one of the first thing, and I think I'm going to share it on TikTok, 
is that I'm going to tell people to ship their bed, right? So I have people shift, not only the side, I have people shift their bed, right? And so to shift the energy dynamics into their room, because if you ever notice when you change your room around, that there is something different about it, right? It's like, it shift your energy, just everything about it shift. So I, I have people like shift their bed and I bed. more stuff I even have with the bedroom that I make them do, but they shift their bed. And so people are like, oh my God, I can't shift my bed. Even if you could shift it, if you don't have any space to like turn it around and redecorate your room, shift it one step over, shift it sideways do something just we're shifting the energy in your room because we're shaking up the relationship area into your room so i do like a complete um makeover so not only does it shift your energy do something with your mind your perception and your belief right because a lot of people because they don't believe they don't believe women don't be, they don't have faith so when you do actions like that right you're not going out to like date or whatever, but you're doing those small actions. So you're speaking to the universe, right? You're speaking to yourself subconsciously that yes, I want a person. So I'm having the faith to be, 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 be feminine, right? You're doing stuff, right? The action in your bedroom. And so that you could manifest and have. So that's why I don't tell people to go date or to do all of those things. I just, I work with the elements around them and make magic happens. I believe in magic because I think that sometimes, <laughs> you know, when you step, I mean, you can't stay in your house and then your person breaks in and like they uh -huh. find you, right? Which that would be nice, but that's not how things work. But I do believe that when you reconfigure the energetics, people just yeah. pop into your life. They just yes. drop into your life. You don't yes. have to do too much, you know, again, yes. not saying that you can't take action and like join dating apps or go to speed dating that's all part of it but I think sometimes yeah. when you switch the energetics people just like start dropping into your life it really does feel like magic yes you will just hop up maybe you're driving one day and um or you're walking and you normally walk the left and spirits say you know what don't go that left way go the, the right way and when you go the right way you will find your husband or your man just yes. because you were doing this magic thing right here Yes, right? absolutely. It's so yeah. interesting that you talked about shifting the bed because, you know, over like a couple of days ago, I just had this thought. I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to switch my bed. I want to change <laughs> the direction of my bed. Um, So <laughs> now you've inspired me to make sure that I get that done. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, the final thing I want to ask you before we start to move towards closing out the show is, you know, we've talked so much about shifting our energy, kind <laughs> of being in alignment with our feminine energy. Um cleansing, releasing things that no longer service. I want to know for the young women listening to this or no matter your age, what are some important qualities we should look for in a partner, a, a man that we're trying to, if you're a heterosexual woman and you're trying to attract a good man into your life. And I know it's subjective. Everybody has different yeah. things that they need, but what are some important things that people need to keep in mind? Okay. So first of all, um, you need somebody with integrity, right? Because if you don't have somebody who have boundaries, right? Or have their, um, if you don't have somebody who have boundaries, or believe in something, right? Then that person will fall for everything. And you don't want that. You need somebody who is a lifelong learner, right? Because a lot of women, they just, okay, as I would say, if you're looking for a partner right now, don't just think about the present person right now because whatever decision that you make in the present is going to affect your future, right? And so a lot of women will maybe see a guy and say, oh my God, he's cute, right? And they will have a relationship. They fall in love, have a baby based on the cuteness. But, and so they will end up get pregnant with that guy based on just because of where he's cute, his swag, his whatever. But you need the person four years down the line to be responsible. You need the person to like help you to do stuff, right? And so when you're making a decision, make sure you have somebody who is a long life learner, somebody who's willing to like hold that, maybe go to um, pick up a book and read who is, if you're having problem in the relationship and you say, hey, I want to go to counseling, the person say they're going to counseling. You need somebody who have the open mind to always be said, hey, 
I am there to work on the relationship with you, right? Because a lot of women are working on the relationship with themselves and the partner is not in it, right? Um, another thing, um, you need some, I would have said integrity already. So um, you need a person who have um, an outlook. What kind of outlook does the person have on life, right? And so you're going to look at, does the person just want to stay where he is right here? Or does the person want to continuously grow, right? Um, you need to look at the person, finance. Not when I say finance, but you need to look, um, listen to how the person talk, right? Are they somebody who want to spend money all the time, don't want to save? Are they somebody who, right? So that person, you have, you have to like, look at things like that um whatever else um just listen to them talk commitment commitment what do they feel about relationship right how do they view love are they going to say um if you love me you would do this that's a good one i think that's how a lot of people unexpectedly get manipulated and even the person saying that they might not be trying to manipulate you mm -hmm. per se i heard someone say that if you're with someone who makes you do things that are not in alignment to who you are that that's problematic right where you're not able to if if you're with someone that doesn't allow you to honor yourself right? Like, it, you know, you would do this if you loved me, right? They don't, mm -hmm. re they don't respect your boundaries. I think that could be problematic. And I also think personally, from what I've been thinking about the little that I know about these things, I think it's important to have a partner that is confident in who they are so mm -hmm. that your light will not be a threat yeah. to them. Yeah. So, so so a, re a relationship is supposed to like elevate you, right? And so if it's not growing, if you're in a relationship, if you're not growing, you're dying. So it's either you're growing, you're stagnant, or you're dying, right? And so there's supposed to be some form of growth. And so if you're in a relationship where you have to work at it too much, then you're that person is not in alignment. Okay, I'm so happy that you said that because I, I always struggle with something, right? People are always like, Oh, when it comes to marriage, like relationships are so hard. It's so hard. You have to fight for it. And I'm always thinking, I'm like, if you're with, if you pick the right person, mm -hmm. should it be that hard? Should you, I mean, of course you're going to work on your relationship because mm -hmm. life happens, mm -hmm. but should it be so much work to keep the union? No, it shouldn't be so much work because you're going to have somebody who, um, let me, let me, okay. So I heard this lady say something and I wanted, I thought it was the perfect example. Are you hearing me? Um, she said that she and her, um, that her kids keep on telling her that, oh, dad is so loving to this new person. Like dad and this person is just always loving and they're talking and they're whatever. And they are just so different mom based on how you were like, dad is like a co completely, totally different person and she said she when she look at it she and her husband is her ex-husband now um they met they get together when they were so young right and they didn't really belong together right they were just forcing the issue and so they used to fight there was just like this antagonistic energy in the relationship right and it was like a lot of work and a lot of it was just such tense but now the father is with the woman he's supposed to be with. So their energy is cohesive. Everything is just nice. They're like loving their flow, right? Because finally he's with his energetical match. They're like aligned, right? So body, he's like with his soul. He's soulmate, right? Or he's with the person where he's aligned with on so many levels. So the relationship doesn't feel like, oh my God, I have to like fight for you or after this. And it doesn't mean they don't have, you know, arguments because people grow in relationship, but it just don't, it's not that difficult or that hard. I feel like you're pushing constantly up the hill. People say a lot of times that 
um, people will say, I'm going to stay celibate till I find my partner, mm-hmm. which I don't think mm-hmm. there's anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times they're saying that because they don't want to create soul ties with all of mm-hmm. these different people. And do you think celibacy is necessary or do you think the intention should be, oh, I don't want to, you know, sleep around because I'm waiting till marriage? <laughs> Again, not coming Listen, for anybody's oh, choice. No, 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 yes. no, no, no. Well, this is this is my choice, right? And I, I, could, I could speak. So I, um, if you're going to do celibacy, it should be because of you and not because of some man, right? It, you shouldn't do it because you're trying to do it just because you're waiting on your husband. That means you're still centering man because you're stopping your sexual pleasure based on if you're choosing by a man. Right. So you could be selective in the partner that you sleep with. Right. But you shouldn't be like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm preserving myself for my husband. I'm preserving myself for my husband. And a lot of women, they were doing it. And because their husband haven't come yet, they're like, I'm so tired of waiting. I'm so tired of waiting. I'm so tired of waiting because they were centering men. The whole celibacy was just because they want to get their husband and not because they were like you know what I just I'm I'm trying to get to know myself better right and I don't want to fuse my energy with anyone right now so I'm trying to like um to separate my energy from people so that when I choose a partner it would be better like I have a clear mind right and so they're doing it just because of a husband wow so speaking of centering men I hear people say (laughs) oh you you need to decenter men and not mm-hmm. focus on men, right? Somebody could ask, if I want to have a partner, if I want to attract a man into my life, mm-hmm. then how can I possibly decenter men? Is there a way to decenter men and live your life, but still hold the vision and intention of calling in a man or a partner? Of course. Okay. Um, because you are going to know who you are as a person, right? And so you, your life is not going to be centered around the man. So this is you. I'm I'm back with this paper. So this is your world, right? This is you. You're the center of your world, right? And so there's many different areas in your world, right? So there is a relationship area. Maybe there's the job area, right? Um, Friendship area, right? But at the center, it's you. So you're not going to make the man take over your whole identity. So you should still have an identity. You know who you are. You have your values, right? You have your boundaries that you live on, live by, right? You have your goals and you have your dreams, right? One of them, you have your goals and your dream. So a man shouldn't take you away from your, you know, your, your completely goals and dreams. Like some woman, right? Say if they were, say going to college and they find a man they stop going to college and concentrate on the man dream and they're no more right so you need to be strong in who you are right as a person and so there is nothing wrong with having a really um in wanting a relationship but you have to be poor have the foundation like you like i am veroni i know what i like right and so even though i have my partner have my guy there is still time. I still do my own interest. He still do his own interest, right? We spend time by ourselves because you need to be alone so that you can refocus back your energy and be who you are. Mm. So I'm, I just want to make sure I fully understand you because I, I yeah. think I do. You're basically saying you are the main character of yes. your life and live your life as the main character do what you want to do explore what you want to explore whether that's you know taking a trip to a different country (laughs) live your life (laughs) and the right person whether it's a romantic relationship whether it's a friendship the right people will (laughs) gravitate towards you without you having to like center your identity around those relationships especially romantic relationships yes magnificent I know we talked a lot about feminine energy and the type of man that we're supposed to bring in. Something that I've had to learn throughout my journey of self-awareness is kind of Mm -hmm. understanding that a man cannot be a woman. And I think a lot of times as women, we're looking for men who are just as understanding and just as caring. And men are a little bit more practical than Mm -hmm. we are. Yes, and they need to be. (laughs) And they need to be. So how can we respect and recognize 
healthy masculine energy because I think people throw around the word toxic masculinity mm -hmm. a lot of times. And when you look at the bare bones of it, it mm -hmm. sounds like people are trying to get men to be more like embody okay. women, at, like a, a feminine energy, right? Which we, we have both of both mm -hmm. in us, but you know what I'm trying to say. So how can we recognize masculine energy and, and honor it for what it is without trying to get men to act more like women how can we respect who they are you know sometimes women could be selfish right in the sense that they want to change men women have this thing where they want to change men right but if a man try to change them it's a problem right and so i want you to look just like how you wouldn't want that person to come in and change you then you shouldn't go in where you try to change them. And a lot of times we are loving people based on how we want to be loved. We're not loving them based on how they should love. Man will tell you that they don't really care about love in that sense. They want you, they, they want you to love them by showing respect, right? We as a woman, we want man to like love, love, like say, I love you and to do all those lovely things, but man want respect. So it's time where we love the other person based on how the other person wants to be loved and not based on how we feel that that person should, based on how we, we love ourselves, right? And so we need, just because we like to mesh identity so much, we need to realize that, hey, if we try to change man, to be like a woman is going to destroy the sexual polarity in that relationship. And there is going to be a problem where he's not going to be attracted to us anymore, right? And so we need to allow men to be men and men need to allow us to be women of who we are. So we can't be selfish as women and wants the man to change, right? Or we're trying to change men. We like to change people. We allow the person to be who they are authentic because we will blossom and be a better woman if we are our authentic self. Yes. Ooh, that is powerful. Allow men to be who they are. Because mm -hmm. again, like you said, a lot of women, we enter relationships thinking, oh, well, I can fix him. I can change him. I could get mm -hmm. him to be more like this. You kind of mm -hmm. want him to think the way you are. And the truth is, mm -hmm. he's not going to think the way you think. And I think the healthiest relationships are when the man and the woman in the relationship understand each other's strengths and mm -hmm. lean on each other's strengths and know exactly when to lean mm -hmm. on each other's strengths. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was brilliant. And I, there's something that I remember now that I wanted to say too, is that online, I hear a lot of women talk about, oh, men are trash. These men are horrible. You can't trust men. You can't do this. There's so much rhetoric about that but these are the same people trying to hopefully attract a man or have a partner one day right and I even hear some people that I'm close to say the same thing like oh you know men ain't this men ain't that right or even from the other side men say the same thing about mm -hmm. women women you can't trust women so is that rhetoric problematic and how does that stop our um energy flow towards love um so that's their energy that's how you are going to look at it. That is not your energy. That is not your vibes, right? And so he's projecting based on his energy and based on his experience, but that is not your energy. That is not your experience. That is not your story, right? And so don't take another person's energy, their story, and make it be your own, especially if that's not what you want to manifest, right? And so I still want you to have discernment. I still want you to use your intuition. I still want you to look at the person's actions. Are they aligned with you? Are you getting what you need out of a relationship and base it on that? But you have to, if you're in a relationship, you want a good, healthy relationship, you are going to need the person to trust you and you are going to need you to trust the person, right? If there is no trust, that's one of the foundation, then the relationship is not going to work. So when somebody's saying that men are trash, men are this, men are that, maybe their men are trash. All the men that they deal with are trash, right? And so if that's not what you identify with, if that is not your story, then that is not you. That's their experience. It's true for them. It's not true for you. Thank you so much for that. Again, 
we could go on and I would love to have you back on the show in the future. And if, if you're listening and you enjoyed this conversation and you have questions or you want us to dig deeper into certain topics that we discuss, please make sure you comment or send an email to shifting dimensions 444 at gmail.com. Um, mm-hmm. I usually like to close out the show, Veroni, by asking if you shifted in perspective on anything recently, since the podcast is called shifting dimensions, I feel like we're always shifting. So it could be deep or something basic. It's completely up to you uh, just for us to close out the show. Have I shifted on? Um, you know, I, yeah, I think I've shifted on um, abundance. Mm. Um, and I have shifted on abundance and I've shifted on um, money um, in the sense where um, we're so focused on making more money that we are not focusing on the money that we have and the fact that our rent is paid, our, um, we have food on the table, um, like there is so much abundance. We are so into wanting more, 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 more that we are, we don't look at the abundance that we have right now, the miracles and all the, the money that we have right now. So I think my perspective shift in that sense where I'm like, oh my God, Oh my God, I have some money. I just pay for my daughter. They say, oh, I just spend money to like buy this. I just spend money on that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, so grateful and so thankful. And so I think my mind just shifts in that way where I am just, my life is beautiful. Yes. My life is beautiful. Yes, you're grateful for what you have and yes. the, your ability to have a roof over your head and, and pay yes. for the things that you need that are necessary. That's a beautiful yes. way of looking at it. Thank you for sharing that. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you, if they want to book a session with you or join your 27 day challenge? Um, so it's TikTok. Um, it's I think it's Veroni underscore love catalyst. I forgot on YouTube, um, hashtag I think it's love catalyst like 22. And so these are the two places I hang out. Um, it's TikTok on on YouTube, Veroni and this is the love catalyst. You can't miss it. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I'm going to put all of the links for your YouTube and TikTok in the show notes as well. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Veroni, for stopping by Shifting Dimensions. Oh, thank it was you. a it was pleasure a having you. Yes, you're it was great. You're a beautiful woman. And I, I don't know if you're in a relationship, um, but I, you know, you're, you're, your energy is just so strong and somebody good is coming, girl. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. Yeah. <laughs>